Presenting music pre-processing strategies to enhance cochlear implant users' enjoyment of recorded music. And I'm Lloyd May, a fourth-year PhD candidate at Stanford University's Karma. A quick recap of cochlear implants, or CIs. These are a special type of surgically inserted hearing assistive device where electrodes are inserted into the cochlea and the number of these electrodes governs the frequency resolution experienced by the cochlear implant user. Typically between 16 to 24 electrodes are implanted. Previous work has shown there's a large amount of individual differences present among CI users' experience of music, the intelligibility of the music they perceive, and their enjoyment of the music. Factors such as subjective familiarity, spectral simplicity, and lead to accompaniment to percussion ratios affect CI users' music enjoyment. Previous work has also shown that CI users are quite interested in technologies that could afford them greater control of the music they listen to. And 80% of these CI users expressed interest in access to tech to mix their own music. This background led to our study motivation in that many CI users make, listen to, and enjoy music. However, canonical CI processing schemes are not designed for music, and modern music production techniques create additional barriers to music enjoyment. Our work seeks to answer three questions. Namely, how do assumptions and industry conventions among professional audio engineers influence the experience of CI users listening to music? Is music more enjoyable if music is, is specifically mixed for an individual CI user? And what are some common mixing and signal processing techniques that lead to improved enjoyment for CI users' music listening? An overview of the methods we employed. We recruited 10 professional audio engineers, as well as 10 expert listeners. These were folks who had been implanted with a CI for at least 18 months and who used the CI for more than five hours a day most days. And the study involved creating bespoke mixes for CI users under different conditions. So we had short five second multi-track excerpts of music of different genres, such as folk, hip hop, EDM, and soft piano pop, as well as a longer 30 second funk track. The study then uh, recruited the expert listeners and audio engineers, uh, had an initial interview and asked them to complete some surveys. And then in the first round of mixing, audio engineers were asked to mix the piece of recorded music as a baseline, as if it would be released on the radio. Next, uh, audio engineers were given a plugin that very coarsely approximated a cochlear implant. This was a 24-band a uh, noise vocoder and asked to mix the music in a way that would sound best through this CI sim. Next, they were paired with expert listeners and the expert listeners were sent the uh, second mix with the CI simulator turned off and asked to give the mixing engineers some feedback via email. This was all anonymized and audio engineers had the opportunity to ask follow-up questions and they were allowed to correspond in the way that they would typically work with any other client. And finally, in the fourth round of mixing, audio engineers were uh, paired with a outside audio engineer who was aware uh, of the study and this acted as sort of a bouncing board for their ideas in the same way that an audio engineer might ask a peer or a fellow audio engineer for their feedback. Then the audio engineers completed an exit interview and survey. And finally, the expert listeners completed a Mushra style preference survey to see which of the music mixes they enjoyed most. The CI Mushra we used is of the canonical form of a Mushra in that it has a clearly labeled reference clip and folks are asked to rate uh, each of the subsequent five clips in relation to that reference. Additionally, the Mushra contains a hidden reference, i.e. the reference track is one of the five tracks they're rating, as well as a hidden anchor. And this is a track with a one kilohertz low pass and some white noise added, so that this is sort of serves as a negative control. 
so that we can be sure if folks are rating the hidden reference and anchor appropriately, we know that their uh, ratings, for example, for mixes two, three, and four are a bit more reliable. So folks completed these mushras for all genres for the audio engineer they were paired with, as well as they were randomly paired with a different audio engineer and asked to rate those mixes. Now, if we look at the results, focusing first on the attitudes of the audio engineers, we see that there was quite a lot of tension in audio engineers admitting their own oral diversity and non-normative hearing experiences. Additionally, audio engineers prioritized clients and artistic intentions and knew that the translatability of their mix, i.e. how good it sounds on different sound systems, was quite important to them. However, hearing assistive technologies and oral diversity was not necessarily something that they were thinking about. And we see that the methods employed in this study from CI simulation to feedback greatly increased the consideration of diverse hearing abilities among audio engineers. Onto the mixes that were preferred by CI users. So preferred mix is one that was rated higher than the uh, hidden reference. And so of a total number of 264 valid ratings, 100 were rated as preferred mixes. Of those 100, 34 were from the expert listener feedback scheme and the rest from the other mixing round. And a little more than half of the feedback uh, preferred mixes were from the audio engineer that the CI user themselves was paired with. And the expert listener feedback contained a wide variety of requests, including for more separation of elements, highlighting their own um, affective and aesthetic preferences, as well as looking at the sonic characteristics and musical function of elements. This boiled down into two main types of mixing methods. Essentialization, where unnecessary musical elements were removed, and exaggeration, where musical elements deemed important were highlighted in some way. Our future work uh, includes creating a web-based stem player that would allow CI users to customize their own music based on the findings of this study, and to combine signal processing strategies we identified into macros with helpful layman labels. We then will develop this with a focus group of five expert listeners to fine tune these macros. And then we'll center CI users and expand to other orally diverse communities as the project continues. This is a collaboration with Nice Polytechnic and Karma. And the web player is actually now live and we're rolling out a large validation study in the next few weeks. Thank you very much for your time. And I look forward to your questions.